Hey folks, just thought I'd give you a quick um, quick show of my new greenhouse here on the homestead. I uh, just got this put up a couple of days ago. I got the plastic over it. As you can see, we got cattle panels, cattle panels bent over, and um, got uh, plastic stretched over it. You know, this was a very, very simple construction. The, the wood you see there is actually four by six. It's overkill. You can use two by fours on these and uh, make it a little cheaper. Uh, but I can repurpose those later and replace them with two by fours. And uh, you just can't ever have enough uh, four by four or four by six posts um, at your place. They come in handy for a lot of things. So anyhow, let me just show you around here. Um, I, I just went up to Marvin's and, and, and got some plastic. It's uh, 20 foot by 100 foot. And uh, I've got just about enough plastic in there in that one roll that I bought to do three of these. Um, this is an eight by 16. And if you'll notice, uh, this looks level, but this is more level. Um, I'm on a slope. So what I'll be doing uh, in the next, uh, next week or so is I'm gonna bring this, this side of it up. And I've got some plans to do for that, but that's going to give it a little extra height on one side. It's got a lot of room in here. Um, in here, I keep uh, uh, some of my tropical plants uh, that's just not going to make it during the cool weather at all. There's a lot of stuff that I've got, or some of it, that uh, doesn't like temperatures in the 60s, much less freezing or below. And uh, those plants will be moved uh, probably inside and kept even warmer, but this is going to uh, allow me to really uh, extend my seasons. Um, but just a quick thing here, uh, I've got some, I've got a, a new uh, kind of a rare plant uh, for most of us, most of us have never heard of it, it's called Crossney, um, Crossney, C-R-O-S-N-E-S. It's a pretty neat thing. It's a member of the mint family, but it's not used as a mint. It's used uh, for a tuber, a, a very small tuber that it makes in its roots. Um, it's actually a gourmet type item. Um, and those little tubers in fine restaurants in um, some of the cities that, that have high-end gourmet restaurants... Uh, you're going to pay um, like $20, 18 19 20 bucks a pound for the, the raw food that they cook. That's what it goes for. Uh, but it's an excellent plant that is a wonderful ground cover. Since it's a mint, it grows fast and covers the ground thickly. And it loves damp, moist, or even wet soil. So there's a lot of people out there that may have... Um, um, uh, areas of their homes, homesteads that, that stay wet and they wonder what can I do with this? Well, this is something here, but it's, uh, you get a root, root crop from it and it's supposed to be easily tra um, transplanted. So I'm going to take cuttings of these and transplant and have a bunch of new plants going for that. And it will overwinter, um, in, uh, in Alabama, at least in, uh, Northern, uh, Alabama. So that's something to keep in mind. Once it's established, it'll overwinter. And then I've got my gigantic pot of uh, Egyptian and um, Okinawan spinach in here. And as you can see, it's overgrown. Can hardly see the pot anymore. Uh, I'm going to um, take a massive amount of cuttings off of that. And then I've got some um, uh, ginger here. Ginger growing. I think that's ginger. I get ginger and turmeric confused um, a lot of times. I think that's just ginger. And um, got a few uh, cardinal plants in there. Um, and then I've got some sweet grass. I mean, uh, lemongrass and comfrey growing in here. A little yacon. And um, I forget what that one is. But uh, it didn't fare too well over the summer. Uh, we had a real dry summer, and I missed a watering. It happens. 
and then I've got a bunch of longevity spinach and Egyptian spinach growing in here that I took for cuttings and so far those have been 100% of everything that I made a cutting of has lived and uh, is growing so that's pretty cool they're very powerful plants and um, I got a little got one one little okra here that is an, an heirloom type I plan on getting some more of those but that's the only one I've I've had to survive I don't know what I was going to do here in the in the fall but I'm trying to keep it going and then I've got uh, turmeric I want to say that's a turmeric um yeah anyhow turmeric or ginger i get confused right now making this video uh, a little more comfort i'm gonna try to get growing in here and there's some regular sweet potatoes um and then i've got uh oh, maybe those may be purples and then i've got some egyptian walking onions and um got some uh, sun chokes here jerusalem artichokes and more uh, uh, sweet potatoes the purple purple on purple variety sweet potatoes it's kind of a rare thing i think they call it a okinawan sweet potato uh, but it's purple on the outside and the inside i've got a bunch of those those are growing crazy and taking off and then right down here i've got some brazilian spinach also known as sisu that i will be showing a propagation video of later and um back here got some very special um bronze muscadimes uh from a wonderful lady that um has an incredible story with these how she's grown them through the years and almost lost all of them and then brought them back from just one plant and uh, now she's able to share some so i've got three of those wonderful bronze musky dimes and i have tasted them and it'll take you to a place just this side of heaven they are so good um what else i got and more of the sweet potatoes which uh these purple sweet potatoes are growing crazy and um i'm that at some point i'm going to use them just as a shade uh, next spring and summer, I'm going to fix it up in such a way that they grow outside um, in pots and maybe shade a great big area like an arbor. Um, but uh, what, what else I got in here? These garbage cans, these and a few others are going to be filled with water uh, to take advantage of the sun coming in here, heating up the uh, water that's in the trash cans and acting as a thermal battery and uh, help keep it uh, thermal regulated in here be a little bit warmer at night with uh, the heat energy coming back out of those barrels at night it's pretty common practice but uh, i just wanted to give you all a quick look at it oh there's something else okay something else okay you know we we do what we can and we try i've got this pot right here i had malabar spinach in and i've got another one and I've done something horribly wrong with this. I don't know what, but I can't. Now I see some trying to survive my care or neglect, whatever you want to call it. But this Malabar is trying to, trying to still live, but it's mostly died out. Okay. I took some, I, I cut it a trellis when it was you know, a little bit higher up so it would have something to climb on. And I cut these branches off of an Indian peach tree that I've got. And um, as you can see, this one's upside down in the pot. This one I, th I think is right side up, but I didn't do it to start peach trees. But as you see, these things have rooted. These uh, peach tree limbs that I cut are rooting. And when I put them in, when I cut them off and when I'm rooting them or stuck them in that pot, it was hot weather. I didn't think that was supposed to be possible um but they sure are rooting and taking off and this one right here looks like it's going to be a viable tree so uh now what's in the pot is um a couple of <laughs> peach trees possibly growing and uh, we hope that this this little malabar here will come back out and do something but that's a 
quick thing. I've got some more cinder blocks that I've gathered up and some two by fours. I'm going to put in some shelves and get going on this. And then I'm going to put out my first video in a while after, you know, after this one. Um, I haven't made a video in, in quite a while. So this will be the first video. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make a video on how to propagate crossney and maybe tell you a little bit more about that so check back and uh thanks for watching bye